Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Jim Bull, and it's Tuesday night, I believe, and we're going to move on here with our book study, The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. What on earth am I here for? And um, we're digging through here. We're up to chapter 7 already, 40 chapters. This book's designed for you and I to figure out what our purpose, what God's purpose for our life here on earth is. And I've been reading this word for word, and the, the chapters are getting really long. So I'm going to try something different tonight. I've read, I pre-read it. I'm going to go through and try and summarize parts of it. And I'm going to let it up to you to get the book and read it on your own. Uh, please comment and let me know what you like best, whether you like me reading this to you, whether you're following along at home in your own book, or if you found it online, or, or whatever the case may be. But I'm going to go through it, and I don't know how this is going to work. I, I jotted a couple notes, and uh, we'll see what happens, right? That's all we can do is give it a try. So this is chapter number seven, and uh, it's entitled The Reason for Everything. And the first two scriptures, uh, Romans eleven thirty six, Romans chapter 11, verse 36 says, Everything comes from God alone. Everything lives by his power, and everything is for his glory. And then the second uh, chapter or reading is from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. The Lord has made everything for his own purposes. Okay? So chapter 7, the reason for everything. And it starts off, it's all for him. The ultimate goal of the universe is to show the glory of God. The ultimate goal of the universe is to show the glory of God. And uh, the first couple paragraphs go on. They're saying it is the reason for everything that exists, including you. God made it all for his glory, not for ours, for his. Without God's glory, there would be nothing. What is the glory of God? It is who God is. It is the essence of his nature, uh, the radiance of splendor, demonstration of his power. Uh, where is the glory of God? Just look around. Everything created by God reflects his glory in some way. Um, Rick Warren says, we see it everywhere from the smallest microscopic form of life to the vast Milky Way galaxies, sunsets, storms, uh, creation. Uh, the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. And on the, on the side note here, it says living for God's glory is the greatest achievement we can accomplish with our lives. Uh, these uh, paragraphs go on to say that it's all about... Uh, God's re revealed his glory to people in different settings. Uh, first revealed in the Garden, Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, to Moses, uh, in the tabernacle. The uh, Bible says the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light. Um, Jesus came to earth so we could understand God's glory. Uh, the sun is the radiance of God's glory. That's scripture. And also the word became human and lived among us. We saw his glory, a glory full of grace and truth. God's inherent glory is what he possesses because he is God. It is in his nature. Um, we cannot add anything to his glory. Uh, it's impossible for us to make the sunshine brighter, right? Okay, we can't do anything to change that. God, God created it all, so we have to give him the glory for everything that's around us. Um, we're commanded to recognize his glory, honor his glory, declare his glory, and praise his glory, reflect his glory, and live for his glory. It's what the Bible commands us to do. Um, it says, in the entire universe, this is Rick Warren writing, in the entire universe, only two of God's creations fail to bring glory to him. So this book saying everything God created is for his glory. Us, the stars, the moon, your puppy dog, your dish towels, okay? All for the glory of God. Um, but there's two things that do not bring him glory in the entire universe, and that's fallen angels, which are demons, Satan, and people, us, okay, because we're sinners, man, you know. Um, <laughs> the scripture just keeps popping up over and over again in my life here lately. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I, I've told y'all a hundred times, a thousand times, some of you have heard my testimony, some of you haven't. Top dog center here, baby. And there's people that outdo me, but I'm, I'm right up. I can, I can take the checkers quicker than anybody. So, um, none of us have given God the full glory he deserves from our lives. This is the worst sin and the biggest mistake we can make. On the other hand, living for God's glory is the greatest achievement we can accomplish with our lives. God says, they are my own people and I created them to bring me glory. So it ought to be the supreme goal of our lives. 
Okay. So, um, next they go on. Rick goes on and says, How can I bring glory to God? Jesus told the Father, I brought glory to you here on earth by doing everything you told me to do. Jesus was tested and trusted, and he was only here for a short while. So, remember back the last two chapters, we talked about the metaphors life is a test, life is a trust. Life is just temporary. Jesus lived all that, okay? But he honored God and he, he passed all those tests. Um, it says here, when anything in creation fulfills its purpose, it brings glory to God. They say that birds bring glory by flying because that's what they were created to do. Even a lowly ant brings glory because he does the job that God created him to do uh, on earth here. The glory of God as a human, as a human, is being fully alive. Um, and then uh, this goes on. There are many ways to bring glory, glory to God, but they're summarized. God's five purposes of your life. They can be summarized in, in five purposes. Uh, the first one: we bring glory to God by worshiping Him. God wants our worship to be motivated by love, thanksgiving, and delight, not duty. He wants us to want to worship Him, not because we fear Him or we feel we have to. Um, once you get God in your heart. Everything you do brings glory to Him. Once you're living for Him, everything you do brings glory. Everything becomes an act of worship, okay? Use your whole body. This is scripture. The Bible says use your whole body as a tool to do what is right for the glory of God. These are all things to help define our purpose. Uh, the second, second purpose. First one is uh, we bring God glory by worshiping Him. Second is we bring God glory by loving other believers. God wants us to love our neighbors. He wants us to love everyone. Uh, John wrote that our love for each other proves that we have gone from death to life, meaning we've met God. We're living a godly life. Paul said, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you. Then God will be glorified. Think about that. Jesus gave up everything for us. We want to whine when we got you know, we got to help somebody out or we're running a little late because of so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Jesus said, As I have loved you, you so much do you love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Okay, number three purpose. We bring glory, three, third way to bring glory to God. We bring God glory by becoming like Christ. Uh, once we are born into God's family, He wants us to grow to spiritual maturity. What does that look like? Uh, spiritual maturity is becoming like Jesus in the way that we think, feel, and act. Uh, the more you develop Christ like character, the more you will bring glory to God. The Bible says, as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, we become more and more like Him and reflects His glory even more. And I found that, man. I was talking to a guy the other day at the track about some struggles, and we both share some sins that we struggle with. And um, I think I'm a little maybe further along in my maturity as a Christian as he, as he is than he is. And I found that the more I dig into God, the more I sell out, the less that becomes a challenge for me okay it's getting easier over time I'm maturing uh, the fourth way we bring glory to God is by serving others by using our gifts my son and I had a long conversation about this today um, each of us was uniquely designed by God with talents gifts skills and abilities it's the way you're wired it's not an accident you know we say oh well, yeah man I'm a mechanic because I, I can do that you know like me forget it dude all right I can rebuild a top end but it, it's not going to it's going to take me 17 hours and it might work, <laughs> you know, but we all have gifts that God's given us. And, and this says that you need to share those gifts. You need to serve others with those gifts. Go out and, and help and love others with the gift that God has given you. Okay. Whether it makes you money or not, it's not about money. The Bible says God has given gifts to each of us, to each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. Okay? And then the fifth way we can uh, show God glory is by telling others about Him. Man, big one, okay? Because you know, I remember, it was tough at first, man. I loved it that I found it, but I didn't, I didn't want my friends to know. You know, they wouldn't think I was lame now. Okay? Get over it, man. Just, you know, get over what other people think what you're afraid they might think. Um, God doesn't want his love and purposes kept a secret. Once we know the truth, he expects us to share it with others. This is a great privilege. 
Introducing others to Jesus, helping them discover their purpose, preparing them for eternal destiny, their eternal destiny. The Bible says, as God's grace brings more and more people to Christ, God will receive more and more glory. Okay? So then, uh, what will you live for? Um, living the rest of your life for the glory of God will require a change in your priorities, your schedule, your relationships, everything else. Um, Jesus cried out when he was on the cross being crucified. My soul has become troubled, and what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour. But for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Uh, will you live for your own goals, comfort, and pleasure, or will you live the rest of your life for God's glory? Something to think about, huh? Okay. The uh, Bible says anyone who holds on to life, just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. Um, so here we go. I'm going to try and finish this out here. Right now, God is inviting you to live for his glory by fulfilling the purposes. And everything in here is important, folks. I just, I, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit reading word for word out loud to you. I can do that. If you want me to continue to do it that way, I will. I just don't want to, you know, sometimes that goes 20 minutes or so, and I don't want to lose you with the length of all that. And I rush through it sometimes. So uh, I encourage you to get your own copy of The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, okay? But I'm going to finish out the chapter here, chapter 7. I'm going to read word for word a little bit because I feel this is really important. Right now, God is inviting you to live for His glory by fulfilling the purpose He made for you. It's really the only way to live. Everything else is just existing. Real life begins by committing yourself completely to Jesus Christ. If you are not sure you have done this, all you need to do is receive and believe. The Bible promises, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Will you accept God's offer? We're talking about salvation and eternal heaven here, folks. Big stuff. It's, it's the real deal, okay? Dig in. You'll find out. You'll, you'll be glad you did. Um, it says, first believe. Believe God loves you and made you for his purposes. Believe you're not an accident. Believe you were made to last forever. Believe God has chosen you to have a relationship with Jesus who died on the cross for you. Believe that no matter what you've done, God wants to forgive you. He will, trust me. Second, receive. Receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. Receive his forgiveness for your sins. Receive his spirit who will give you the power to fulfill your life purpose. The Bible says, Whoever accepts and trusts the Son gets in on everything, life complete and forever. Wherever you are reading this, I invite you to bow your head and quietly whisper the prayer that will change your eternity. Jesus, I believe in you and I receive you. Go ahead, do it now. We'll wait. Jesus, I believe in you and I receive you. If you sincerely meant that prayer, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. You are now ready to discover and start living God's purpose for your life. I urge you to tell someone about it. You're going to need support. <laughs> yeah, you are, but it's all going to be worthwhile. Uh, it says, if you email me, I will send you a little booklet I wrote called Your First Steps for Spiritual Growth. And all I have, and I, I guess this is still good. I didn't double check it. Uh, there is a website, uh, www.purposedrivenlife.com. Dot com. It's just Purpose Driven Life, not The Purpose. www.purposedrivenlife.com no, www i got to get some visuals, some, some text on here. i got to learn how to do that. Maybe i get my son to help me. Pleasant View Productions will make some better videos. What do you think, huh? So check out that website. Maybe you can get a link to that to get that free booklet. Um, Again, just to review that, it says that uh, there's five ways to glorify God, but we're going to spend the rest of this book now looking at the five different ways. We just did a quick summary of those. Uh, so day seven is thinking about my purpose. Uh, the point to ponder is it's all for him. The verse to remember, for everything comes from God alone. Everything lives by his power, and everything is for his glory. And that's from Romans chapter 11, verse 36. For everything comes from God alone. Everything lives by his power, and everything is for his glory. 
the question to consider today is where in my daily routine can I become more aware of God's glory? Where in my daily routine can I become more aware of God's glory? So anyhow, I tried to wing it and summarize things there. We're still at 15 minutes. I don't know if it's any better or any worse. You guys tell me. Reach out in the comment section. Uh, yesterday, I just put this on my YouTube link. We only had eight views. That's okay. That's eight people who saw it. Maybe eight people who loved it. Maybe eight people who hated it. I don't know. Maybe somebody needed it. But I'm going to maybe go back and put this on Facebook so you can comment on it to make it a little easier. Let me know what you prefer for me to read it, for me to summarize it like I did here. Uh, might have been a little confusing. Maybe we have to do it a couple times. But anyhow, I love you guys. You all rock. Love God. Glorify Him. And we'll see you on the other side.